And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra. It is most definitely not Saturday. This is not the Gazette. This is a this is us bringing back an old, an old thing of the of the Valley of the Judged, oh which boy. I haven't I haven't done this in about four years. But given that the article that w that was discussed on this particular matter deals with a subject matter that is near and dear to me, and one that I'm probably gonna have to tear a new asshole, plus to prep for what we've got planned for later this month, Zena was was willing to. To help play um, opposite to me on this, opposite or adjacent, we'll see which it, which it becomes in the end. I'm betting adjacent. So yeah, background. About a month ago, it was announced that Magpie Games was going to be was going to be getting a long term license to do material on Avatar: The Last Airbender and The Legend of Korra. Specifically RPGs, since that's mainly what they're known for. Um, and they they're not ex they're not exactly scrubs. They have they have a decent track record, r whether it be Masks: A New Generation, Bluebeard's Bride, or um. There was one. There's one more that I'm thinking of, but I can't I can't think of it at the at the moment. But the but um. It's def it's definitely an interesting cho choice to go with them because you would you would think with Nickelodeon wanting to be cheap they'd go they'd go to Wizards of the Coast and try and, and try and arrange a deal. Yet another five E um expansion book. Hmm, that would have been even worse, or would it? I'll I'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> so a a. A article was put up on Dicebreaker that is going over the f going over primary details, some comments from Magpie Games, and the, and is, as it's titled, Five Playable Eras, Keeping Balance, and How Bending Will Work. So so it begins, and I'm gonna be I'm going to be I'm gonna be reading and reacting. Um, Zana, if you've got if you've got if you've got to interject, um, just just let me just let me know so I can make note of where I was. All right. So, Mark Truman, f freshly escaped from the Truman Show, s CEO of Magpie Games, feels the last decade of the studio's work has all led to the team working on Avatar: The Last Airbender RPG. The studio recently announced it secured the license. Blah blah blah. We've covered we've covered that with a source book dropping in 2022. Truman and lead designer James Mendez Hodes spoke with Dicebreaker about the current design process, much of it still not written in stone, and why Powered by the Apocalypse felt like the right platform to build their game. Mm. Magpie, oh. you had me, and then you lost me. Uh, uh, why am did, I not surprised? Did I not say a month ago that Powered by the Apocalypse would have problems being being used for Avatar? Oh, you did. You definitely did. Mm -hmm. Now, I will give a small benefit of the doubt if they're willing to be creative with the formula the same way um, Cult Divinity Lost is. Because Cult Divinity Lost doesn't use the original Cult system, it uses Powered by the Apocalypse. That was actually a smart move in that case because um, the original cult system was way was very '90s crunchy. If you if you follow me, <laughs> all the numbers, oh. all the numbers, the numbers, Jack. What do they mean? <laughs> yes, I make. Yes, I'm making a Call of Duty joke in a room full of weebs. I don't care because Black Ops actually didn't suck. True, but the but the but 
the problem th the problem that I had is that the temptation to have each bender be a playbook in and of itself is too great. It's also the same reason why, although they did a decent job with with um, masks, I don't feel I am of the opinion that um, there are certain genres that Powered by the Apocalypse just can't do. One example of that is supers. I don't think you can really do a superhero game with that sta with the standard playbook design unless you really start hacking it. And, well, and we've covered why that is. Mm -hmm. It's due to the fact that supers are all about unique um, unique differences between each character. Yeah. Um. It. There's always get, there's a, even in the even in the old days of champions there was always a thin line between supers and universal games. Um. Now, with mute, with a more recent example with mutants and masterminds, it's not. It wasn't too much of a surprise when it leaned into a fantasy, its own fantasy hack called Wizards and Warlocks, or a weeb hack in Mecha and Manga, both of which I still uh -huh. have. Now, granted, those both were those are for second edition, not third edition, but you get my point. Both of which are pretty good too. Mm -hmm. Um. The other, another genre that it definitely can't tackle. And I know this because I had to cover the thing for Wrestling Month. Is is doing wild world re doing worldwide wrestling for um, using powered by the apocalypse. That was prop. That was the prettiest looking wrestling game that I had covered, but it was also the one I'd be least likely to run because. That sounds like a cluster, man. Um. There is. I'm not sure how many wrestling games you've played over the years, but there is one feature that is that is almost required for a good wrestling game for the for the last thirty years. Would you like to guess what that is? Mm -hmm. Create a wrestler. Uh huh. In f in fact, there was an earlier version of the WWE 2K series that got lambasted for its lack of features with Create a Wrestler. This is this has been in, this has been integral since the PS1 days. Yep. And the but because of how the playbook is set up, if I wa if I wanted to do somebody who it the character who I was using throughout re throughout the wrestling month reviews was somebody who dabbles in technical and high flying you know going with the background that they spent some time in Mexico and spent some time in Japan okay with the playbook system i could not do that i'd either have to stat them out as a technical or a high flyer you'd have to do a a, a playbook for either one genre or the other you couldn't do a, a mix a mixed uh mixed are they still called stables these days? Mixed stable? Yeah. Um, well, stable is with a group. I'm talking just an I'm talking just an individual, and yeah, I'd probably I'd probably have to use two playbooks at the same time, which isn't exactly ideal. So again, it sounds like a clusterfuck. Mm -hmm. And I know some people go, well, well, duh, well, wrestling has a lot. Wrestling lives on the archetypes. So why not use the playbook? The problem is a a, a lot of um. A lot of wrestlers, especially nowadays, and especially on, say, the indies or the international scene, aren't uh, aren't as adherent to the to those to the archetypes that are presented in that book. Um, I'd even I'd even argue that that some uh, some wrestlers, some of the greats from early days, weren't uh, weren't adherent to just one archetype. Uh, one of my Call call me call me a a, a a a normie for this one, but one of one of my favorites, Rey Mysterio Jr. Uh, sure, he's a high flyer, but he's got a lot of other things under his belt. He doesn't always do the high flying, and in fact, it was only really there for his biggest highlights in a lot of his matches. So, I'm not I'm not going to call you a normie f when it comes to when it comes to Rey, when it comes to Rey Mysterio. Um. Plus, you know, Lucha. <laughs> Lucha, I, I can't, I cannot get enough of Lucha. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm so, you'd probably, you'd, you'd probably like you, since this, since the series is more or less done, you'd probably like some of the early episodes of Lucha Underground. Mm-hmm. I did. 
Um, but it, anyway, Truman and lead designer James. Ma okay, I already went that. Mendez, along with several other designers of color and in indigeneity. Okay, there's our there's our second red flag. That's a buzzword and a half. Mm -hmm. Just that word alone has been indigeneity. Working. Oh and man, that word is great. Has been working. And I mean, along, great isn't terrible. Has been working alongside Magpie on writing, design, and cultural consultancy. Mm. Uh. Consultancy. <laughs> Hey, it's not like these are actually from the regions that they're meant to be expies of. Yes, they follow some of the general trends of, for example, imperialist China, the indigenous uh, peoples of, of, of the Inuit tribes. Um, <laughs> the Air Nomads are obviously Tibet. I, I know that a lot of people try to argue that the fire uh, the fire nation is supposed to be imperialist Japan, but it's way too Chinese for that. So the Earth Kingdom is is Empire of China prior to other empires of China, in my opinion, and Fire Nation is Empire of China after certain <laughs> kingdoms of China. It's two yeah. it's two flavors of Chinese, in my opinion. It 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 very much is. I mean, you could, you could prob you could probably, um, if I wanted to get real pedantic, you could say that they're more akin to two different types of dynasties. Yeah, um, I would say that the uh, the Earth Kingdom is the Qin Dynasty, and the uh, Fire Nation is the Han Dynasty. Yeah. But then he goes. Mark contacted me back in September and said, "We've got this license property." We know you're going to want to work on it. We can't say what it is. So I was convinced for a couple months that Mark had gotten the license to make a role-playing game about the Wu-Tang Clan. That sounds awesome! Why can't we get that? <laughs> I don't think I'd want Magpie to touch it at this point. I wouldn't... I would... T I, if if the RZA gave me his blessing on that, I would work on that in a heartbeat, and I'd probably do it, bet I'd probably do it better than Magpie would do it. Probably because Wait, I'd... Do, I'd, I'd do you think we could... Um, I think we could pull it. I think we could pull it off. Though there is one person who I'd probably ask, not as it, not as a consultant, but simply to help um, bounce ideas. <laughs> and that's that's um that's Joel Clark. <laughs> okay. Like, maybe maybe we should petition uh, Method and Red <laughs> after this. <laughs> I I don't think I don't think that's ever gonna happen. But hey, but hey, let me dream. Damn it. Hey, um, you never know. Maybe Method Man plays fucking tabletop. <laughs> well, given that there was that P there, that uh, Wu Tang game on the PS One, I can't completely write it off. And I'm sorry, but the, but the entire movie, uh, um, <laughs> how high? <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> we'll just say, we'll just say that we're trying to adapt the Man with the Iron Fist movies, and that and then slowly use that as our inroad. <laughs> anyway, do it. Let's see. Mendez quickly recovered from the initial disappointment of not designing Method Man or Raekwon playbooks when he heard the details, along with past title Thousand Arrows and consultancy work on Jiangshi Blood in the Banquet Hall. I wanted to like Jiangshi, but the way that they were writing the the thing, they were more they were more concerned about cul about cultural accuracy than telling me how the fuck the game works. They did a, they did a whole article about 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 how about how to not have players speak to orientalist. Like you can't control the kind of accents with ta with tables that you're not at. Wait. There wait there's what there's there's a section in the book that tells you not to speak to orientalist. It was, I don't know if it was in the book. I never bought it, but it was it, it was in the um it was on the Kickstarter page. I distinctly remember that. Uh, brain hurt. Mm -hmm. Why do? Ow. So, you had previously. And the thing, the thing is, the 
the concept of Jiangxi blood in the banquet hall is is not isn't too terrible. You have you have you have chi you have um you have a, you have a family of immigrants who who are running a restaurant by day and having to deal with attacks by Jiangxi at night. And apparently they're combating racism by day cuz it's 1920 Chinatown. I see a s. It's a case of misplaced priorities. It's, here's a future tip for to to game designers. No one ca no one cares about your about your person about your personal cause when it comes to the game that you're making. Much in the same way that no that no one going to your website cares about your website. They don't care how pr unless looking cool is the point. They want they want information or they want to buy something. If you're not giving if you're not doing either of them for for them, then they're gonna go somewhere else, and that place is gonna get their that place is gonna get money. Okay, so I, I found the section you were talking about mm -hmm. about playing a Chinese character. Avoid using accents. It's a role playing game. Are you telling me that when I design my Highlander with his Tarj and Claymore, I shouldn't go around sounding like I'm Scottish or something? Fuck you! That's... Avoid exoticizing the culture. Mysticism sometimes. Do they do they realize how much mysticism is in the everyday lives of Chinese people? These people, the, the most common religion in China is a form of ancestor worship. Never mind the fact that what what the hell what the hell does exoticizing even mean? But in, anyway, oh. Oh. <laughs> let's let's keep going to st to steal the steal line from Carlin. Let's keep going. Think think. Magpie's ten year history mirrors some of the larger shifts in the tabletop design space. The company began around the same time as crowdfunding platform Kickstarter, which Truman and other members of the team still use as a way to fund their projects and draw feedback from fans. They also adopted D. Vincent and Megui Baker's Apocalypse World as a foundation for some of their first breakout titles, giving them an intimate familiarity. Let's see. As it turns out, it would also be a perfect fit for adapting Avatar from a beloved kid's television series into an RPG system. Okay, I might be a bit pedantic, but... Um, for some reason, put it. For some reason, adding that adding that kids television series par part um, annoys me. I mean, it's one of those cases of technically right but still wrong. But anyway, <gasps> think we knew right from day one that powered by the apocalypse was what we wanted to do with this product. Magpie used Mass A New Generation as a working prototype, realizing the themes of self-discovery and understanding the morality of power at the core of the young superhero RPG shared a lot of DNA with Avatar. That's going to be a pro that's going to be a problem because you're and this I I see this happen a lot whenever someone tries to officially or unofficially adapt a uh, adapt a popular IP. The assumption that you're going to pl that you're going to play with the same feel as the, as the TV as the source material. In other words, they're more, they're more, they're more concerned with adapting the show than the world. This is not a smart way to go to go about this kind of thing, because when you do that, you're effectively just doing a worse version of the show. Yeah. You have to adapt the setting. Now, back in back in the day, there were modules for, say, the Star Wars RPG that replicated some of the movies, and surprise, surprise, those modules weren't as popular as the ones that didn't. Probably because you could experience the movie without playing it. Yeah. In f hell, the um to use to use another example, TSR had an Indiana Jones RPG. But if I were to ask if I were to ask about a Indiana Jones RPG, that's not the one that people are going to bring up. People are going to bring up the West End Games one. Cuz well, 
is the Indian the TSR one, even though it was using the same die mechanics as Boot Hill, had the problem of not of of adapting trying to adapt the movies because you because you had to play as the cast from the films. There were no, there were no full on character generation rules. Limits uh, creativity, and thus limits the intrinsic interest that some people have for the game. Yep. And I know I wasn't on the out it they only made they only made a f they only made like five expansions which for TSR in the in the eight in the uh, 80s is not is not exactly um not exactly high marks. But the That's what, that's, pr that's pretty poor compared to what they did with other things. Yeah. But the t the um the TSR game not the TSR, the uh, West End Games version that used uh, Masterbook did much better for them. Not as not as well as the uh, D6 stuff that they were doing, but it still did decently for for them at the time. Um, let's see, moving on, they said they also s felt that PBTA's playbooks give them the space to explore what it means to live in a world of colonization and systemic oppression, but also one of shared culture and values. They really they are both, trying to replicate the show, and nothing else. Both Truman and Mendez emphasized the importance of their RPG getting this right. Do you? Do I? Oh, hmm. Yes, there's the hundred year, a hundred year Sozin to Ozai. Let's colonization and oppression of that specific section of the history of Avatar's setting. Apparently, they didn't read the promise. <laughs> <laughs> I Cause... just hate this. Do you do you remember the do you remember the in between comic, The Promise? Yes. Where the where the it. Where they they thought, hey, we'll we'll fix everything by get by giving the, by giving the Fire Nation colonies over to the Earth Kingdom, and that ended up making things worse. Well, yeah, the Fire Nation colonies had already been established with a Fire Nation culture and hierarchy, and they had kind of grown accustomed to what they had. And Z and. <laughs> And because Zuko. of that, the, Zuko ended up getting not one, but seven assassination attempts in the span of a few months. Yep. And it, it, it's, it's, it's called good intentions. Remember that the road to hell is paved with them, people. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Zuko learned from that. Yeah. The whole re the whole reason that the whole reason that the re the Republic of Nations was formed was because no matter who, no matter who the colonies were given to, it would end up causing problems. Yep. But if it, but if it's a, if it's its own identity that no, that nobody has claim to, then pro, then problem solved. Give them the right to self governance. Mm -hmm. Let's see. He goes. Mendez says the question he gets asked the most is how to play an Asian character without tripping headlong into stereotypes and derivative pitfalls. If, he's, if that's the question he's asked most, he's in a, he's in an echo chamber. He's in a circle jerk. Yeah, which is pretty evident from how important this whole let's let's look at the social problems angle is going. Mm -hmm. Yes, social problems are a part of a setting. They are not the setting itself. You fucking numpty. Let me. By his, by his, lo by his particular logic, if I'm running a Lord of the Rings campaign, which I have, should I, should I expect somebody who's playing an elf to speak Elvish? By his logic, no, because that's gonna fetishize and mysticize elves. Whatever the fuck that means. And as far as far as the as far as the whole as far as far as the whole fetishization, why is it that these people always always end up always end up using language that makes me that makes me wonder if I need a safe word? Um, 
actually had to explain to some friends of ours yesterday how that word originally comes from the religious connotations of voodoo. So I don't think that these people know those religious connotations, and that's why you think you need a safe word. No, I'm mainly I'm mainly saying that because the because the line between their arguments and the, and them arguing about what they do in bed um, is very thin. There's a line. <laughs> um, although I mainly have this in my mind because of that quote I saw from um, George Martin, where he where he was asking, "Mommy, where do hobbits come from?" It's oh like, God. Nobody, nobody cares about that. Just because, just because you have characters boning every other chapter, doesn't mean doesn't mean everybody else does. Anyway, let's keep going. It goes. Ang and Korra's world is one of pastiche and homage, which makes the whole, uh, which makes the whole how to play an Asian bring bring brought into this completely pointless. Yep. Drawing from the language, architecture, art, art and philosophy of several <coughs> East Asian countries, in stark contrast both in stark contrast and interesting blends by focusing the playbooks on a lived experience versus some innate characteristic like race or heritage they want care get players to begin character creation on the right foot unless you're playing fatal there's no such thing as beginning character creation on the wrong foot even munchkins who are literally trying to play min maxing just so they can see how badly they can break things are not beginning character creation on the wrong foot. The fact that you think there's a wrong foot to begin character creation on shows that you don't know the first fucking thing about character creation and you need to take your head out of your ass before you start smelling shit every day, every second. <laughs> Let's keep going. He goes, if you can write that cultural content into the playbook in a way such that interfacing with the playbook is all that the character player has to worry about, then all you have to tell them about how to play an Asian character is don't worry about it, just play a character, and the game will supply everything you need. You can do that anyway! That's what I do every that's what I do every single time with my class. I just tell them, give I you this is this is the process that I tend to go with when I'm guiding someone through character creation. I I ask them to give I ask them to 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 throw to throw me to throw me some concept ideas and and that and we'll work with that. And that's before we even get into crunching the numbers. Have a concept in mind, build a character around it. That's and most systems have a way so that you can build that character around your concept. Mm -hmm. Imagine that. It's almost like character creation is intrinsic to RPGs. Who would have thought? Let's see, the source books will also contain resources to guide both GMs and players towards tasteful appreciation for of the Avatar world's influences, especially if a Asian, Asian or Asian American players join them at the table. Tasteful appreciation. So, mm. allow me allow me to retort. Zana, have you ever read the Tales from the Atori book series? Oh yes, I love them. I have them all actually. Um, you probably have the you probably have the um, I'm get um since you mentioned all I'm guessing you have all five books. Yes. Um, I'm probably gonna be getting into the into the uh, prequel books later this year. Oh, nice. But Leanne Hearn, and I'm using that name even though it's a pen name because I can't remember her real name. A lot of the experiences that she drew that she drew upon when writing those books was. The, was based on her experiences living in rural J rural Japan, as part of the um ex as part of the exchange program that was going on between Japan and Australia. And throughout throughout all throughout all of that, there was never there was never an, the only cons the only concern that I believe she had when she wrote about it in her blog was ju was just the was just being being out there and be and being out in the being out in the Japanese forests was 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 inspirational and I want and I wanted to try and capture that in in this particular story that's it there was there was no I mean not obviously there was there was some consultancy to try and to try and put some believability in into her work but like probably the consultancy on things like nightingale floors mm-hmm 
and in fact, a uh, side note about that, Across the Nightingale Floor is what attracted me to, to the Tales of the Odery. Just that title alone. I was like, I know what a Nightingale Floor is. I know what it's for. Mm-hmm. But what's this book about? So I then had to read. Um, I... I ended up getting. I ended up getting the. I ended up getting the books recommended to me on a, um, L, on a L five R forum that I was on. That doesn't surprise me. It, it, people from L five R would likely have read the series. Because mm-hmm. I, I, there, there was one book and one comic that was repre- that was um, that was recommended to me, and I still have both of them. Um, the Ator- the Atori books was one of them. And this was just this was right around the time that Heaven's Net is Wide had come out, mm-hmm. and the and the other was um, Oko, Tale of the Asagiri, mm-hmm. which um, I don't like to do the whole French comics are be- French comics are better, but um, at least when you compare them to American comics, they tend to be more interesting. <laughs> um. Especially nowadays, but ok- Oko was Oko was de- is definitely a is definitely an interesting affair. It um it was probably this it was probably the second French comic I ever bought because the first one was Bone, which took me a, took me a while to really warm up to because it kind of has some tone whiplashes. Mm-hmm. But the the but as far but tasteful. App- I've never understood this idea that you that we need to do tasteful appreci- tasteful appreciation of a culture one a culture that's fictional and two the same when I see that I'm I'm thinking so you so you are aware that cultural appreciation exists you've just lost all claim to use the appropriation card ever do you know do, do you know the only thing that's running through my through my head right now what I bet you that uh, both Mendez and Truman did not like Ghost of Tsushima. What I bet gi- they. What I gives bet you they that, What gives you that? What what um brings you to that assertion? Well, there's a lot of mysticism in that game. Remember, you have the wind literally guide you places and you can summon it at any time. Mm-hmm. And half of your sword moves summon the wind. Not to mention that you that you get some uh, semi-mystical powers as you become more of the ghost. Um, and the fact that it is glorifying the, the Kurosawa type of samurai we see, which is not at all actually like what real samurai were like. Um, <clears throat> that would be then gainsaying Kurosawa. And, well, th- at that point, I'd point them and be like, you're a bunch of hypocrites, but that's just me. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I just, you know, it, it strikes me that this game that is clearly a love letter to Japan, to Japanese history, Japanese culture, and things in Japan that are interesting and fun to see, goes to Tsushima would offend them because it wasn't done in quote the right way end quote let me let me take one step further they probably also really hated jade empire for oh man i love that reason. game too um i will i will note if anybody's going to be playing jade empire in 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 current year get the gog version install the install mod you're welcome <laughs> uh yes <laughs> But I, uh, he, I, I just like I said, the the only thing I can think of is, oh, they wouldn't like these games that are really nice. But he, here's here's the thing. If whenever whenever somebody whenever somebody does the whole a, as a blank American, I'm, I always end up coming to I believe I believe it's Teddy Roosevelt who said this that anyone who has to add who has to add a suffix to them being an American is not. The entire point of being American is that you're shedding identity to become part of something greater. There was a reason America was re- was referred to for such a very long time as the great melding pot. It is where cultures, peoples, 
histories came together to become a gestalt that is greater than the sum of their parts. Mm Mm-hmm. To take a focus on the part you are rather than the gestalt you have become makes you a gear running against the grain. It makes you an a, a nail that is sticking up. It makes you the squeaky wheel. Don't do that shit. You're American. W- color of skin, wear your... your history is from all of these are nice things to acknowledge that you have but in the end you are american you are part of a fantastic melding pot of cultures acknowledge that Mm -hmm. embrace that and bring your culture to meld with it do not separate your culture from it yeah now he goes i always i always tell people you have to be really careful about taking about taking a lot of people's time and emotional energy. They don't want they don't necessarily want to pour out all of their, you know, deep secrets about cultural issues. For them, that might be really touchy and sensitive. So why are you so why are you focusing so much on it? One thing we definitely want to do is to guide players in terms of how to do that research and how to bring in real world in um Asian influences in a respectful and validating way. Here's here's the problem. You have you are do you're committing a self-fulfilling prophecy in doing this because you're fo- because of the fact that you're focused so much on on what people shouldn't do that you're preventing them from from exploring what they can do in other in other words pe- in other words some um, it's kind it's kind of like how a studio might might do less might fo- might focus le- might have might be hesitant to have a female lead because of all these articles and hot takes and think pieces about all these different t- all these different female leads that quote unquote got it wrong i realize that i realize that's an extreme example but you see where i'm going with this it's not extreme at all that's a perfect example and- especially because it actually has prevented people from uh, making making female characters in games and in media. If I have to use a racial example, I'll, I'll go with the following. I have made no bones about the fact that I I cannot I, I cannot stand Tyler Perry movies. I hate them. I hate them. They're with not every... funny. They're not funny. They're not funny and it's the same fucking movie. He only knows how to do. He has only known how to do two movies for the last twenty years. Yep. And I have never the. It's it's basically he 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 only knows how to do soul food and Medea. Yep. I didn't mind I didn't mind soul food, but when you see that formula done ad nauseum, I got sick of it. But the reason the reason why I don't like Tyler Perry is because he is because he does those two movies. He speci- he explicitly focuses on um, on hi- on hiring bl- on hiring black majority casts, and because of that, he ends up sending the message that it that those are the kind of movies that you hire black actors for. Pigeonholing an entire stretch of people because you're trying to do the right thing. And I I know, and of course. It doesn't help. It doesn't help that when it comes to him as an actor, he's not. A, he's blah. Um, I saw Alex Cross a, a few years ago. That put me to sleep. But and one would think, well, what about jo- what about Jordan Peele? Do you ha- do you have the same issue with him? I have a different issue with him. The di- the issue that I have with him is that he f- is that he's hyper focused on themes instead of substance. That's why when everybody was hi- when everybody was singing the praises of Us and talking about how it was one of the best horror movies in years, I'm like. This is shite. It's worse than shite. At least shite. At least shite knows it's shite. This is shite that thinks it's not shite. This is shite that thinks it's high art. Yeah. Which, considering the modern world where uh, where uh, a woman shitting off of scaffolding onto canvas is considered high, is high art, we can kind of see why. It's just theme. Having strong theming is not an excuse to skimp out on your storytelling. Then, anyway. To be honest, I, 
I, I enjoyed us for one reason. The music paced really well. Like the music itself is no is nothing to write home about. You're the talking music, about the editing. Yes, the music paced with the movie very well. So while if you just listened to the music alone, it'd be like this is kind of eh. mm-hmm. along with the movie, you're like oh I, I can I can see where the emotional beats are. That's nice. Yeah. Too bad this movie is empty, but hey. And because the lack of a distinctly defined white people. Oh, I see where you. I see what you really want. Eases this. Eases this work somewhat. Both Truman and Mendez admitted. RPGs that clumsily weave in Asian influences, often having one character stand in as a cultural monolith, whether it's a magical, mystical, dragon-themed villain or the one good guy who knows who knows karate, according to Mendez. Um, how is that? How is that any different than? Than having the one elf in the party, I, or or say Star Trek having the having the one representative of of a non of a non humanoid cult non humanoid culture, whether it be, uh, whether it be um, Spock in, Spock or Worf, or if we get into the later ones that are uh, less good. Uh no um. I mean, of course, we also even have Ferengi that are represented rather well in DS9, even though they're, you know, abhorrent people. <laughs> but the, the 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 big thing here is is what this person is doing with what they are saying. Both the fact that they that oh, there's no white people, so we can enjoy things. Well, even if there were white people, you could enjoy things. And if your setting is so white. In other RPGs, why aren't you choosing a different setting where everything isn't so white? And as as far as as I th- something that something that I can't help but notice in this is that I'm, is I have to ask this question: Are you writing a setting or are you writing a story? Because if you're because the whole because the whole the whole um the whole one character standing in. That is that is a table by table issue. If now when it's now when it's in a story, maybe you'd have a bit of an argument. Not much of an argument, but you'd have an argument. It sounds to me like he's conflating story writing with world building. And while story writing commonly has world building as part of the story writing process, depending on the type of writing, obviously there are exceptions to every rule. Mm-hmm. A magic mystical dragon themed villain? How is dragon theming exclusive to Asian culture, asshole? Magical and mystical and dragon go hand in hand no matter what culture you pull the dragon from. Where do you think the name Dracula comes from? Son of the dragon. What? There's there's dragons in literally every fucking culture. Because it was a stand-in for the harsh nature and unknown threats of what was out in the mysterious wide world. Here there be dragons is a fucking phrase used to say, we don't know what's here. Be really fucking careful, because you can die. And so, so fuck you, you racist shit. You're the racist. For assuming that dragons are Asian exclusive. Why do I, I have a strange urge to break out my copy of Fireborn? We'd be here forever. <laughs> <laughs> Let's let us continue, shall we? Yeah, I'll I'll just say that Robert Jordan would like to have a word with this motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Robert Jordan, Terry Goodkind, uh I mean Tolkien. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, the uh, let's see, the other huge concern was the bending. People in the Avatar universe can manifest the ability to manipulate the four basic elements that compose the world water, fire, earth, and air, and are referred to as benders. In the show, this power is tied to specific countries in their history and is layered in meaning and social importance. It is also used as a weapon as a tool, and that Dual social slash combat utility has proven a challenge to design in a satisfying way. A challenge, not um, not really. 
Fuck, I've done it. <sighs> there may have been a challenge 20 years ago, but not, not when there's already a decent precedent, and we'll get to that later. But he said, It would be easy to clearly define the rules of bending in the terms of crunchier systems such as Dungeons & Dragons or Burning Wheel, but that betrays the ubiquity of bending's potential. How? First off, first off, you... Um, bad example to use D&D because guess what? Fans have already done it. Three times. Probably more if we went looking. I have seen I have seen it I have seen it done in I've seen it done in third edition. I've seen it done in I've seen it done in fourth edition. I've seen it done in fifth edition. I've seen it done in Pathfinder. I've seen I have I've seen it done in Anima, and so on. You you want to know what I'm just thinking right now. You want to know what lends itself perfectly to bending that you could adapt to bending almost uh almost almost immediately. Exalted. Exactly. I, even though with Exalted, you you really do have a tie to the setting for how Exalted's great curses and everything just use work. Bur- just use the burn legend rules. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and there you go. Mm-hmm. You can now have Avatar in your Exalted. Oh, um, <laughs> I. C- I've seen it. Do- I've seen this done in Feng Shui too. You know, a game, a game that is loving, that is lovingly built, or, built around, um, built, built around the kind, of, the kind of over-the-top action that the Shaw brothers would have done. Yep. Okay. That when players create their characters, certain bending types will not be restricted. They will. In- they will instead drill down how well that character can bend their pref- their preferred elements, um, except the, except for the fact that there, that's ki- that's kind of missing the point because there are, restri- there are bending restrictions. The reason the reason why those those particular styles of bending were root are rooted in those particular cultures is because they emulated the animals in their respective areas. Not to mention that it was only the Avatar that had the propensity spiritually to harbor four elements. Let's see. Go. It was this idea of competence and training. We really want to emphasize that a firebender doesn't have to roll dice every time they bend fire. We want to emphasize that somebody who's great with technology in Republic City is not rolling dice to turn on a sodomobile. Um, yeah, you should if there's a if there's a risk that something might fail. But but cantrips are a thing. Well, and I get what they're trying to go for here with the sentence. And if they had been more careful with their words, you want to emphasize the fact that in non-pressure situations. In a situation where they're just using their fire bending or their water bending or their air bending or their earth bending to use it, and not in a situation such as combat or a drastic maneuver of some sort or anything of the nature that would go beyond normal practice, essentially, um, would requ- wouldn't require. Uh, a die roll. Yes, somebody who's good with technology, who already knows how to use an automobile, may be able to just turn it on anytime they need to. But if there's, say, three firebenders jetting down the street at them to kill them, and they need to start that car right fucking now, yeah, they're going to need to roll for that. Even if they're good with technology, they'll have maybe an advantage, or maybe they won't have a disadvantage, but they'll still have to roll. Because they're in a pressure situation where they could fuck it up. As far as as far as use, um, I have to wa- use bringing up a automobile is a is a bad is a bad example in this case because um, e- even a perfectly reasonable car can sometimes have things go wrong, and uh, and hell what hell are you saying that somebody who's good with technology isn't gonna have to roll dice if they had if they were trying to I don't know hotwire it. I'd definitely make that a roll. I'd be like, okay, so you know technology, but do you know how to short two wires in a way that will start this rather than just using the crank and or key or whatever it is? Mm-hmm. Let's see. 
Bending in Magpie's RPG will not be defined by how many feet in a cone a bender can push air or how many hit points a thrown rock does in terms of damage. But why not? I'm trying I'm trying to I'm trying to discern why exact why exactly this is a positive. If it's because of the fact that you it sounds like you don't want you that um Again, again, the vibe that I get is that these these are people who are who are trying to who are trying to write a given story and not trying to write a setting. Now, once again, story writing does play a factor in in world building, but you have to remember that you are not writing a story. As my mentor had said a long time ago, a novelist is shorthand for a bad DM. Unless they're actually intending to be a novelist, in which case that's different. Mm-hmm. Um. Players will make a conscious choice as the, as the campaign advances to deepen their understanding of bending or to go a different route, become an adept politician, or strengthen the personal relationships within the group. Because apparently, apparently the idea of, of, of giving stats to bending was too boring and limiting. Um, I'm pretty sh given given the amount given the amount of freedom that the spheres of power books have. Just w just in the base without get without going into the expansions, I'm calling bullshit. The idea that it would be too li the too limiting is com is complete bullshit. It's the only limit is your fucking imagination, mm -hmm. and if you don't have the imagination to stat something because you think it's too limiting, do you even have a prefrontal cortex? Are we sure you're not just operating off of your fucking limbic system? Yeah. Um, goes. Of course, there will be clear paths for the players to realize their dream of becoming the most powerful firebender in existence, if they so choose. Um. Then what? That. This is a. I'm conf This is a very confused appro approach to design. They're giving people the freedom to to be Ozai. I mean. If you really want to be they're, that egocentric, this is going to create problems. With, they they talked about how the playbook design was a perfect fit, but with sentences like these, it really doesn't feel like that. And that's the reason well, why, as I met, as I mentioned last month, I wouldn't use the playbook design. To be honest, with a lot of these things, I just think the track design from Legend would be really good for this. Honestly, yeah, honestly, that. I would probab I would probably um I would prob I would probably have each bender as its as its own class and have different bending styles as tracks. Um I do remember I do remember someone someone a long time ago had um had be had different bending had um different bending skills and so and certain bending effects were treated as feats. Um, he was using he was using fantasy craft as his base. Oh, that's nice. Um, I could see that working. And I've and I've seen a similar thing done with um with weapons of the gods, and I'd actually say weapons of the gods slash um, legends of the Wulin are a natural fit for um for an avatar oh. type campaign. Oh hell yeah! Weapons of the gods would be great. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, there's formatting issues with weapons of the gods, but um, that's not that's nothing that I can't fix. Especially since with the million style manual, you can make and you can make any bending style that you need to. Not to mention the fact that people like you and I. When was the last time that we played with just the base rules? I can't give exactly. you that answer because that because you're asking the impossible. So exactly. The design team understands that the visuals of bending are also important. The show famously worked with Sifu Kisu to represent real-world martial arts and the body movements of different benders. Mendes Only in Atla. Korra just turned everything into fucking MMA boxing. Fuck y'all. Don't worry, we'll, we'll be getting to Korra later this month. <laughs> uh, I look forward to it. Yep. Mendez said including those details are wonderful, but if the table is comfortable with that level of de if if that if the table is comfortable with that level of detail, but they don't want to acknowledge to 
that knowledge to be a barrier to enjoying the game for newcomers or those lacking the vocabulary to just to describe the many possible forms. I consider this a missed opportunity on their part. Well, not only that, but in in Avatar, in the actual show, those forms were not called, you know, Wing Chun or Sha or Southern Shaolin Kung Fu or anything like that. No. What they were called was Air Nomad style, Northern and Southern Water Tribe styles, Earth bending style, which was just like one big thing, and fire bending style. They were the styles of martial arts that were emulated from the movements of the animals and or forces they were imitating. And that's it. <laughs> there was no special terminology. It's just do these things. Like when, when for example, when, when Toph was teaching Aang how to earthbend, you have to root yourself and feel the earth. And because he was so used to being flighty and floaty, it was hard for him to do so. You don't need any special terminology. You're fucking stupid. Let's cons let's consider the f let's consider the following, and th and this is going to be my other my other my other counter because I'm going to bring in another um, manhua that I that I I'm going to br be bringing in a um a manhua that I'm ver that I'm very fond of, and that that is um, Chun Rang Zhir Shun or Legend of the Serious Wars. And when it came to when it came, and when it came to the when it came to the fighting styles shown in that, I could see I could see some points in comparison. And actually, I'll do one better. <sighs> Zan, I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure you and I are cut from the same cloth. So I'm pretty sure you read at least one volume of Fung Wan, also yeah. known as also known as the Storm Riders. Mm-hmm. When it came when it came to Wind's fighting style, what what with it, what with his kicks and the like, it's never referred. To, it's never there's never any reference to what his particular style his particular style of kung fu is based on. It's referred to as Blizzard Kick. Yep. I might have that confused with Blizzard Fist from from Weapons of the Gods. If that case, I, in that case, I correct myself later. Um. Like all all that we. The main thing that we knew is this is somebody who's good with his legs and tr and has to try and keep his emotions in check because not because he's emo or some shit like that, but because he's suffering from the family curse of taking in the blood of a Kirin. And spoilers for an, for an old ass for an old ass monk old ass Montois, he ends up succumbing to that curse in at least in at least one part in the storyline and has to get brought back. But the, but here's here's the thing. You could present those kind of visuals to give pe to give people who may not have known about it a bit of a gateway drug and want to learn more. I there's a whole generation who of kids who got into martial arts because of the action that they saw on Power Rangers. And I I know I know that there was the whole controversy at the time about imitatable behavior, but the point is, instead of instead of trying to limit that, you should try and you should try and foster people to want to learn to want to learn more about this sort of vocab. I'm pretty sh I'm pretty sure we, I'm pretty sure we have we all have we have our own stories when it comes to getting into martial arts through its depiction in some form of media. Yes. And want and wanting to learn more. Plus, doesn't it seem a bit contradictory that they talk they talk about wanting to wanting to have this thing enjoyable for newcomers who may la who may lack the vocabulary when they spent so much time uh, trying to beat trying to beat down newcomers' vocabulary? <sighs> like, people pointing out their hypocrisies is getting tiring. <laughs> Let's see. Anyways, it goes. The game will instead allow players to personalize their bending forms to match their personality. The precedent for such has existed in the show since its inception, and Magpie feels giving players fiat in choosing how to represent something tied to their character's core identity is never a wrong design move. Great! 
But the problem is you're still using a playbook system, so any sort of personalization is still going to be on a tight leash. And if you um, the only way that you, the only way that you can give people that level of personalization is by separating the fluff from the crunch, and I am al I will always be opposed to that. That's what. I'd also go ahead. Go ahead. Um, a while a while back, somebody tried to somebody tried to argue that they could make a bunch of they could make a bunch of different um, champion fighters all play differently, and and I'm like. Just because you get just because you give a fighter a broadsword instead of a longsword does not mean that they're going to be playing differently. Mm hmm Um Not unless that they're not unless you somehow make an intrinsic difference between the two. In which would, case you'd be focusing on on making your weapon styles your new class system instead of making it a class system based on people. Yeah. It would be like arguing that you can it would be like arguing that Ryu and Ken in in um, Street Fighter Two are are com are com are completely different fighting styles. Now, granted, those two event eventually did ha did have a more pronounced difference over as time went on, but not in two. It was in uh, two Turbo when um, Ken got the Shoryu Repa. Yeah, but uh, I'm talking I'm talking um, in, two, in two two arcade. Yes, yeah. we know mm -hmm. um, where. Where they were literally pallet swap. That's well, because in the original they were pallet swaps. Mm hmm. It's just Ken was, you know, now the cocky American and Ryu the stoic Japanese. By the uh, way, if you wanna if you wanna get into into stereotypes that work as character traits, look no further than Ryu and Ken. Look at how they became his characters. And <laughs> and you don't you don't see anybody batting an, batting an eye about that. I think the the only the only thing that people that people batted an eye with recently with Ken was it was the banana hair in Street Fighter Five. I think the well, yes, when it comes to people who actually care about the series, yes, it was the banana hair. Everybody laughed at it. When you when you come to people like uh, like like these guys, especially Mendez, especially Mendez, Truman, and I don't know too much about, but Mendez, um. The, their type of uh, um, wishy-washy and uh, hand-wringing um, would be about Armika or uh, Elena, because Elena is, is, yes, she's doing capoeira, but is she really Brazilian? That doesn't look Brazilian. That just looks like Gongoro. Um fact, I, I, I remember, I remember oh. somebody, I remember somebody trying to argue that there, that. Are, that um when it, that the that the hip attack that uh, that Armika uses to is too ridiculous because there's nobody no way no way a wrestler would actually use that I'm like do you watch any Joshi <laughs> <laughs> do you watch any wrestling period hip attacks are a thing that happened with uh wrestlers throughout history yeah it's a spe it's especially prominent in um in Joshi and Armika is ba is much like much like how much like how um. How ze how <laughs> how a lot a lot of a lot of wrestling ec ec much like how say um how Fei Long is is one giant Bruce Lee send up. Armika is a Josh is a Joshi send up. Yes, she is. Oh. Yes, she is. <sighs> doesn't help. Doesn't help that her that her tag partner is one is one giant nod to Nadeshko. <laughs> Because, but remember, these stereotypes aren't harmful because it's the Japanese making them, right? Well, then, it, well, keep keep in mind that they're still bit they're still busy trying to figure out whether whether or not whether or not Asians count as white or not. Oh no! You see, these guys here, Mendez and Truman, for them, Asians are definitely not white, except when they are. Mm -hmm. Any, anyway, let's keep going. An additional <laughs> mechanic Mendez is proud of is balance, a measure of how closely a character is following the themes of their playbook. While they couldn't offer too many concrete details, role-playing in the Avatar world will pull characters in different moral and ethical directions, and the critical decisions they make, large and small, will affect that balance. I don't care for this. 
This is just the alignment system with more steps. Yeah, and um, when I during that little art during that little archetype spat that I had on Twitter yesterday, some people brought up on how in um er, in early D and D the GM could grade how well somebody was playing to their to their archetype. The reason I've never cared for the I've never cared for this sort of mechanic. For the same, and it's not just in this. I don't care for say, the for say the way um the way virtue fl- the way virtue flaw and limit break work in exalted. I don't care for the I, I only care to a point the way um humanity works. And there's a reason why the whole why the whole paragon renegade morality system isn't being isn't being touched upon in RPGs nowadays. The problem that the problem that I have with these sort of things is that I feel that alignment systems work very well when it when it is not being used as a morality system. When it's when oh. it's being if you want an example of this of a quote unquote alignment not being used as a morality system, consider the Elon or divine gifts from Anima. Mm-hmm. In that case, Elon is is a measure of how much one of the barrel of the, or the shahads like you, because you're doing yep. things that they agree with. Yep. Well, and then uh, I, I think, and and you know, don't cut me off before I finish the thought mm-hmm. that alignments as a morality system can work if. They're reactive and descriptive rather than prescriptive. A person creates a character concept that is using the classic D&D nine alignment system for accessibility reasons um, is neutral good. It's a guy who's not really going to follow every law he comes across, but he might have a personal code that works, although sometimes he'll even forego that as long as it's doing the right thing that's all well and good your 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 character uh if your character continues to follow that concept i as as a gm have no reason to make any checks say to change it whatever Mm -hmm. but if your actions start to change to a point where you're where you're out of alignment and you're out of alignment long enough I'm going to go, hey, so you've been acting like this for a really long time at this point. Um, I don't feel that you reflect your initial alignment. Go ahead and change it to X. What, whatever that means to you, it's just tracking that your concept has changed. It's not me penalizing you or forcing you to make an alignment check. It's just, hey, your behavior as a character has changed a bunch. Please, you know, make a note of that. And I was go- I was going to bring up um I was going to bring up the 10 virtues in Weapons of the Gods and Legends of the Wulin, but that has a that has a far more mechanical um inference. It does, but also but again, it's not being used as a morality system. No. Plus it plus instead of instead of going with go- Good or evil, it's going with chivalrous and selfish. Mm-hmm. Um, but the the prob the problem is is that is you can't you can't add you can't advocate freeform. The big problem that I have with something like balance or something like the way um, a lot of people fail at using alignment is there is when it is when alignment gets restrictive. My fav- my favorite example, of course, is the barbarian who has to be chaotic. Which... And that's the entire reason back in 3.5 in one of the uh, splat books, you got different types of barbarians and also different types of paladins to, uh, to reflect chaotic and lawful on both ends and good and evil on both ends. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> when... <clears throat> Because the the thing is, by doing, someone might someone probably might think that in doing this kind of thing that they're, adhe- they're having things adhere to to the uh, setting. 
but the problem this is what this is why it's important to to remember the limits when you're effectively writing a sandbox because you don't because for all for all you know the sandbox that a given that a given table is using isn't going to match your sandbox that you had in mind when you designed the game and unless you're going unless you're going with a game unless you're going with a setup that is that that is strictly distinct on this matter you're you have you have to bear that in mind like obviously i would obviously i would not try and do this kind of thing with say degenesis because that is a very clearly defined setting with its very clearly defined rules on how things work yeah and games like that can work and they're really fun yeah they they are it's just a matter of it's just a matter of making sure that people know what, what they're getting into yeah like I'm not, I'm not gonna have a Walking Dead fan plop, get plopped in front of the Genesis. <laughs> okay, I might, I might simply to see the reaction, <laughs> but you. Get... Um, when you when you said that, I was like, no, Monk could definitely do that. <laughs> yeah. Um, when beginning a campaign, the table will be able to choose from among the five different time periods in the Avatar universe as the setting for their adventures, each centered on the life of a particular avatar. Avatar Kyoshi and Roku encompass eras that had already passed into history and legend by the time of the original show. Avatar Aang's era composes all the last airbenders events in Aang's life afterwards. Korra's period takes place during the second television series and explores how the quickly modernizing world is shaped by her actions. This is probably the only reasonably good idea that they've had so far. You know, choosing choosing among diff choosing among different time periods. Except um, this leads this leads into one problem that I'm pretty sure they're not going to have the guts to address. What if I w suppose that uh, suppose that I, as the GM, want to do a what if scenario? I recently came across a a um a web a web comic that pit that um. Pitted the pitted the avatar in a that pitted avatar Aang in a what in a what if universe where he where he was not found by he was where the positions of the water tribe and fire nation were reversed where the water tribe was the one doing the conquering and the fire nation was the one being conquered more or less and it was it was Zuko and it was Zuko and Azula. Who f who found him? That's sounds. I want to see that story all of a sudden. <laughs> I want to see that story all of a sudden. If I can f if I can find the comic, I'll sit. I'll send it to you later. But the p but the point is, if if I wanted to do something like that, or put or um or do a, or do a suppose I wanted to do some sort of some sort of spy fiction bent. Deal, dealing with um, dealing with the politics of the Earth Kingdom. You know the, these kind of things that are that are basically approach approaching the Avatar universe as a sandbox for me to build my ca for me to build a, my proverbial castle instead of something that's pre-described. Yeah. And the. F and I don't. I don't think. I don't think that they. Ha I don't think that they will have the courage to actually consider. To actually consider those implications of a what of a what if. Hell, L five R managed to do it a decade ago with the with the thousand years of darkness block. Mm. Um. Let's see. Because the obvious outlier will allow groups to experience a world during Aang's imprisonment in the ice and in, and the ensuing 100-year war era. It's like okay, that's nice, that's nice and all, but again, again, the vibe that I'm getting is you guys are not is that Magpie Games is not writing this as a sandbox. I don't even get that they're writing this as a fucking game it just seems like they're writing a writing a world and not really wanting to deal with it see we <sighs> truman said we are committed to a very broad view of what it means to be in this world and we think 
that gives you the ability to choose one of the spaces that you think is going to have the most excitement and the most conflicts that are right for your group. Truman seems to be very hands-off in this thing. Um, let's see, fans can expect all of the smaller details of the universe to also make appearances, from the chimeric animal hybrids and cabbage vendors... My cabbages! ...to the ability to introduce canon characters into campaigns. I am... Um, I have problems. By putting a canon character into the game, you're going to inevitably pull the spotlight away from the players. Yeah. Magpie is less keen on hard-coding that last point, but understands certain groups might want to brush shoulders with greatness. Well, if you wanted to brush shoulders with greatness, <laughs> um... You certainly picked the wrong. You certainly picked the wrong guy to do it. See, they didn't go so far as to introduce an avatar playbook. Some things remain untouchable. Um, um, once again, I, okay. I find I find I find that to be another missed opportunity. I'd probably now, if I were writing this, and there was, and I would probably put in. Um, in a side about playing the Avatar, and I'd probably put warning labels about the consequences that could happen with giving someone that amount of power. But I don't. But I don't. But I don't think having. I don't think having that be untouchable is the smartest move. It's a smarter move than what they could have done. I su I suppose. Because ultimately, Truman and Mendez expressed hope in preserving the emotional tenets of the series and its expanded universe of books and comics. Growing up in wartime, learning the responsibilities of power, colonialism, and its damaging legacy. Um, I find I find that whenever so whenever someone talks about its damaging legacy, I find that I find that they end up using that in a very the way the way that a child would look at colonialism, or the way that say. TNG era Gene Roddenberry looked at military with his with his not too with his not too <laughs> annoying insistence that Starfleet is not a military. Ignore the fact that they have naval ranks on a naval ship with orders and weapons. They're totally not a military. Um, I mean, just ignore the fact that they're called a fleet. Mm -hmm. A fleet is not what you tend to use to refer to anything besides some a grouping of some sort of military power um <sighs> so my problem with the whole colonialism and its damaging legacy yes colonizing is a painful process for those colonized we acknowledge that but let's also not forget that colonization leads to greatness well my problem with this point is not that you know we can acknowledge that damage was caused but that we also seem to ignore the good things that came from it for example a very recent uh, colonial um influence the u.s occupation of japan following world war ii the people here would say all the bad, horrible things that came about for it. And then I would immediately turn around, and then the largest economic boom that that country has ever seen, followed by being a leadership in technology worldwide, a cultural, uh, a, a cultural treasure to most of the world, and a hardworking and fastidious people who have pride in themselves because they survived something so horrible as World War II and occupation. Yes, damage was caused. Bad shit happened. And they grew out of it stronger and better than ever. Fuck you for focusing on only the negative. Do you know what we call people like you? We call people like you downers. You drag everything into darkness with you because if you can't enjoy it no one can i'll break your fucking fingers if you try to drag me down i'll just bite them off 
I don't even. I don't want to get there. That's it's dirty. You don't know where that's been, monk. At least if you break their fingers, you can you can be assured that you're washing your hands later. If you bite them, no matter what, some of your saliva is going to get to the back of the throat, and then you can never get that out of your digestive system for like another few hours. You just gross. It's just gross. Don't do it. It's 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 unhygienic. Bad, bad monk. So is eating McDonald's, and I've had to suffer through that. <laughs> My choice. This, oh, this goes. Ultimately, Truman and Mendez expressed hope in, in, in preserving the emotional tenets of the series and its expanded universe. I already mentioned that. And the importance of empathy in personal relationships. They want their game to empower players to ask the same important questions first posed by the show, along with providing satisfying narrative tools. You should not be concerned about having players asking asking important questions because when people are sit when people are sitting down at the table, they're there to have fun. I know that you and your ilk want to do this whole we need to move away from fun at, from, from fun, but no. Every time somebody tries, it always, always fails. Because because if some because a lot because these are you're forgetting that role playing is a communal experience. Is it possible to ask important questions? Yes, but you but if you forget that people are there to have fun, then in the words of Reggie, what's the point? Yep. That's the reason we're so excited about Powered by the Apocalypse as an engine for games like Avatar. Ultimately, these settings are about people who are making tough choices because they value many things, not just winning a fight. It's your point. I feel. I feel your... like. Th I feel like this is this is the kind of attitude that comes from someone who has a very childish um, interpretation of game of games like D and D. The kind of person who thinks that because their narrativist game is more about story, that ma that makes its narrative superior. Ignoring the fact that you can have a you can have games with str you can have campaigns with strong narrative in crunchy games. Yeah, you once, see it happen in, in Shadowrun and a whole bunch of others all the time. Once a, once again, there's it's this you have the, you have this you have this notion of the of these kind of people being embarrassed. That they're making a game, because it, it go, he goes on to say, but in fact, what are the costs of the fight? Who does the fight hurt? Who is saved and who is not? Who is hurt and who is not? And more importantly, what does it look like for for all this fighting to be done? Um, Gundam would like a word for you. It's been do it's been asking those kind of questions for the, for the for the last fifty years. Gundam would like a word with you. They fucking did it better, and they acknowledge that people are there to watch anime for fun too. Mm hmm. God, uh, this to, all this sounds like to me is they want to make a game that is the same as going to a gender studies course or a, 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 a an African American studies course in college. They they want to turn it into a fucking lecture. They want to turn it into a a fucking. Uh, we want to teach you that you're wrong thinking. That's all this. That's all I hear right now. Here's now, wrong thinking through through this game. We're gonna teach you the right way to think. Fuck you. Now he. Now a a bigger problem that a bigger problem that I have, and this is something that I've been hinting at all all throughout this. Mm -hmm. They they are first now first. First off, because of the popularity of Avatar and the fact that there, the fact that for a lot of people there was nothing really like it. Obviously, the world fascinated them, and they, much like, much like other settings like say Mass Effect, they wanted to they wanted to explore the possibility of their own stories in that world. Because when you have a when you have a strong enough world, you can potentially tell any kind of story if that world is presented properly enough. Yep. This is this is, and if you need another example of, of this, um, consider how consider how many how much influence people have taken from Firefly. Despite yep. despite how short lived that series was. 
and despite the fact that uh, you know the ensemble cast, while being the focus, much of Firefly, uh, much of Firefly setting has been replicated in other places. That doesn't actually mention Mal Wash or any other part of the Firefly crew. Mm-hmm. The 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 because of that. They they have they, you have several instances of fans take taking the approach and trying to and trying to do it themselves. As I mentioned before, we've see, we've seen this done. I've seen this done in D and D third edition by fans. I've seen this done in Pathfinder by fans. I have seen this I've seen this done in a multitude of other games. Oh yeah, and I've also seen it done in Powered by the Apocalypse. There's a game called Legend of the Elements that's basically Avatar with a, with all the infringing material filed off. Avatar, but without Avatar, <laughs> essentially. Originally, it started as a, as a as a Avatar hack of Powered by the Apocalypse. Mm-hmm. But when he decided that he wanted, to, when the creator decided that he wanted to go legit with it, he filed off the stuff that would have gotten him sued by Viacom and just released it as Legend of the Elements, much in the same way that D6 Space is basically Star Wars D6 without the Lu- without the Lucas shit. Yep. Like everybody knows what it was, but no, but obviously nobody's gonna say it. Yeah. Now, there's also. For, I think one other issue I have is that it's not only clear that what they're looking to do is make a specific narrative, which means they're not writing a game. They are writing a story. And they're trying to couch it in a story to make it interactive so that people pay more attention to it. And also that they're just trying to to what rehash the alleged lessons of the actual shows and the comics Th- then you you've basically boxed everybody into only one way to experience the game this is this is why I this is why I'm, I kept asking are you trying to write a story or are you writing a sandbox yeah Ide- ideally. When I look, when I look at um, when I, when I look, I'll use I'll use a I'll use a setting that I ha- that I happen to be f- that I happen to be fond of as as my example for this. I I like Cthulhu Tech. It's definitely got its problems, and the di- and the die system is swingy as fuck. But I but I still enjoy it. Mm-hmm. Cthulhu Tech is ob- obviously very married to its setting. To the Aeon War, of course. But when I read through the thing, the things within the Aeon War, whether it be whether it be the Taggers who are basically are basically um, Giver in all but name, or or the or the um, Arcano Technologists, or the or the or Mecha and Angel pilots, and and the like, what it is provi- what it is providing me through the, through the various through the various areas. Factions, rumors, which are basically story seeds, and so on, is the means to create the story that I want in that particular setting. Yep, a sandbox. That is what you're supposed to be doing. With so, with something like with something like Avatar, the ideal way to do it is the this is the world. These are the rules. These are the mover. These are the major movers and shakers. Giving you just enough so that you can fill in the blanks and do it your w- and do it your way as you see fit. That is going to be far more engaging than just replicating the se- replicating the se- the um, series and series and its relative themes. Because I the because I could easily see some I could easily see someone go someone going with the notion of what if I don't want to do that the a weak sauce version of the TV series. What if I wanted to do something like I, I don't know. The player characters are are sleeper agents for the White Lotus. 
you know, because that because that's an organization that's hit, that's hinted at, but there's still plenty of room to there's still plenty of room to go with that organization in whatever means you want. Mm -hmm. And because of how old that organization is, you can use it for just about anything. Or rather, use it in just about any era. Um, cons there, there are there's so there's so much diversity within the Earth Kingdom that there's plenty of stories that you can tell there that don't in, that don't directly involve the that don't directly involve the um co the areas that people are familiar with. These are questions that they should have been asking and they didn't. They were more focused on things that, for all intents and purposes, aren't going to matter once a DM gets their hands on this. Yep. Even it's going to be chopped apart. Because I, I, while there are certain DMs who play it more rules as written than we do, the fact of the matter is that th that um, people who play people who play rules as people who play rules as written are are, are um. Are always are never going to truly do that with time. Someone may do rules as written at first, but eventually they're going to start tweaking. It's, it's just an, it's an inevitability. Yeah. It's e it's either it's either going to be something suggested something suggested on their part or on the part of one of their players. It's not a matter of if; it's a matter of when. And. I'd, and I have no, I have no, I have no confidence that they that they are writing anything more than a glorified game book. That's all. That's ultimately why I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure that I'm pretty sure that I'm going to be hearing a whole lot of people making a buzz about the, about this game. But I ha But but after so many years of seeing of seeing fans handle handle this setting. In 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 a way that is, that is either written as assuming that assuming that the player that the players and GM are already familiar with the source material, or writing it in a way that it's written that is presented as that sandbox. You ha there is a there is a lot more of a um a lot more a lot a lot more expectations put upon it because. This is a series that this is a IP that's been around for a while, and a lot of people have taken their cracks at adapting it. And the vibe that I'm getting out of this is very is a very John Carter kind of thing. The specifically the John Carter film, which I always mm -hmm. argued came out too late, because over the past century, over the past century, so many people have taken inspiration or taken notes from it that it's hard for the source material to stand out. It's not to mention that it wasn't really that good of an adaptation. It w it was it wasn't, but I'm saying it was I'm saying it was doomed to fail anyways. It would have only been good as a, a film for people who are already uh already fans of Burroughs. And well, let's be honest, if they're fans of Burroughs, they're probably spending more money on the um on the comics. True. But but so but suppose that. But even even with even with all that, the um. The bit the other the other major problem is. This sort of interview. I should be I should be getting ex it should get me excited about the potential, story t stories that could be to that could be told, with this set with this setting. Cause it's not it's not like this is a shitty setting or anything like that otherwise it wouldn't be as po otherwise it wouldn't be as popular as it is and you, and unfortunate and the f what they decide to focus on in this interview which is e is either a failure on magpie games's part or on dicebreaker's part i could go either way on this mm -hmm. Is the is the fact that th that they were they were more cons they were more concerned with things that ultimate once again ultimately don't matter. No, no one at my, nobody cares at the t at the table what your ethnic background is, unless you're at unless you're at a table full of crazies. 
Yeah, when you're at the table, what you are, uh, meaning the the intrinsic properties of of your body, tall, short, skin color, what you have in your pants, whatever, doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. You are a, you are a you are a person there to have fun with everybody else who is there. That is the assumption made by the group. And sometimes that's not always what happens. There are, there are disruptive players, and we have endless stories, but that's neither here nor there. Yes. But you, you as a player, or even you as the GM, once you step up to the table, your in, in, indelible uh, attributes, the things you can't change and were born with, don't matter Mm -hmm. because what we care about is that you are there to work with the rest of us have fun and i know that i know that inevitably i'm gonna get straw manned with someone saying that i don't like i don't like narrative focused games or i don't or i don't like powered by the apocalypse as a system that is not true there are powered by the apocalypse games that i like i narrative systems he loves look at his love of exalted Yes. I just to just to give a few examples, Beam Saber is pretty good. Cult Divinity Lost is very good. Karandun Make God Bleed is very good. Um Dungeon World is pr- is pretty da- is pretty damn good. Blades in the Darks before be- before it really became its own thing started out as a hack of powered by the apocalypse that just got out of hand and became and and separated. And the thing, and the and let's not forget that there's a new that when it comes to rules like games, there's innumerable hacks of Savage Worlds that I love the death. I was I'm even willing to get I'm even willing to give the Pathfinder Savage Worlds thing a shot because I've there are certain aspects in the Pathfinder universe that I find interesting. It's just that it's stuck with a system I've moved past. Until until now that is. Um. And and hell, I um, one could one could argue Tenra is a ver- one could argue Tenra is a very narrative centric system, and I enjoy the hell out of that. Well, I, I'm not even gonna say that one could argue Tenra by its nature is a narrative focused system. It refers to everything as scenes and encourages not including the whole group in each scene so that people have the chance to stand out. It's all about the narrative there, bro. Well, it's, it doesn't exactly hurt that so that so much of it is taking notes from um, Kabuki theater. Kabuki and a bun- and of course, you know, anime and manga and all the popular stuff the kids like, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The point the point is is that the that all the problems that I'm having with this adaptation of Avatar into Powered by the Apocalypse are so are solely the are solely the issue of how it's being implemented. And now I could e- I could even see a means of it, of it, a means of implementing bending within powered by the apocalypse's system by t- by taking the by taking the freeform casting approach where you ha- where each style of bending has a set of effects and the more effects you tackle onto it the harder the roll is. Yeah. And not to mention the fact that you already pointed out that there was a powered by the apocalypse hack that worked. Yeah. Jack, let me um let me dig. Give me a moment to dig that up. My my issue with this, beyond the fact that it's very clearly being used as a vehicle for the uh, the developers' personal uh, uh, crusades, they're not just an agenda. It's a personal crusade, clearly. Um, is the fact that by 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 using that personal crusade as the lens by which they've interpreted the source material, they're limiting everything. Mm-hmm. They say they're trying to make it limitless, and maybe certain aspects will be limitless. But the fact that you want to control how your players think 
is the largest limiting factor in the whole thing. It's it's disgusting. It's disgusting how insulting it is that they think they have to impose thought on other people. So my 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 issue beyond the fact that powered by the apocalypse isn't the best system in, uh, to do this in beyond the fact that what they're describing mechanically sounds too vague to be worthwhile beyond the fact that it doesn't sound like they've actually fleshed out the world is that they are trying to use this whole thing as a vehicle to make people think in a very specific fashion. And I am never for that. If you want to turn a fun a fun anime like Avatar, and yes, Avatar is an anime. I don't care. Fuck y'all fight me. Um, <clears throat> if you want to take something fun and creative and fantastic, a world that has such potential and such great things to pull from it and be inspired by, and you want to narrow it to your extremely pessimistic worldview, then fuck you. You don't deserve it. And my only hope is that when this doesn't take off like you hope it will, like, sure, the Kickstarter will probably succeed because everybody likes, you know, Magpie has name recognition and everybody likes Avatar. Uh, I hope that when people get their hands on these particular books and they actually get into them, they go, this isn't really Avatar, and it flops. That's my only hope, that this flops. It sucks, but it would be better served to flop than to succeed and give people the wrong idea that this is a good way to make this game. Also, I, I ended up lo I ended up looking at the at legend at Legend of the Elements just to get their just to get their idea on how they how they handle bending. First off, they have sub playbooks for certain more specific styles, like say lightning bending. Lightning bending. Mm -hmm. um, now they call it sh they call it shaping in this, but but um, it's bending by another name. We yeah. know now. Aside from the fact that it's that it ha that um it ha it has a um it do it it has a it has a it has a setup for that you'd expect from the playbooks, but shaping is one of is a starting move that's that the shaping playbooks have, and I'll use water shaping as as the example here. It says you have a small supply of water. You can carry up to three water, which is replenished whenever you come across a, a sufficient body of water. When you manipulate water in combat, spend one water and roll fluid. On a ten or greater, choose three from choose three from the following list. On a seven, eight, or nine, just one. You can pick a single option multiple times. Either impose a tag on a foe, impose an environment tag, or get the spent water back. Other actions can involve water shaping, but are treated as whatever move they, they would be appropriate. It's not too far off from what I would have done. Yeah, it's pretty freeform that way. And it also lends itself uh, pretty well to, to uh, theater of the mind. You can get those environment effects and those tags and then describe how they actually worked in combat. Mm -hmm. You know what the mechanic is. Now just imagine what you're doing however you'd like to imagine it. What a concept! Imagination being freeform. I mean, it's not like humans haven't been doing that for the last 40,000 plus years or anything. Now, as far as whether or not I will... Rev I'm pro it's probably inevitable that someone's going to ask me to co to cover or talk about it. The only way the only way I see that happening is one if some if somebody um if somebody emails me the P the PDF because I'm not spending money on the on on this shit magpie and two if I do it it's going to be a versus video 
It is go it is going to be Avatar versus Legend of the Elements. And we already know who wins that battle. We kn the only re the only reason I the yeah the vic the victory is assured on that on that case, but the reason why I the reason why I'd want to do it is sim is simply to sh is simply to um demonstrate what happens when you put your focus in the proper area. Yeah, when you don't when you don't fuck around and find out when instead you you put your money where your mouth is. Yeah. It would be very easy for me to for me to just write for me to just write it off, write one of them off, and saying it sucks. But I don't. But instead, I'd ra I'd rather divert some. I'd rather divert it to people who actually do care about what they're writing instead instead of instead of care about their own personal crusade. Yep. But, you know, take take a negative and make it into a positive, as opposed to take a negative and wall and wallow in it and. And get mad at anybody who who tells you to man the fuck up. Exactly. Making a positive out of it is the best is the best outcome. Yeah. But that is go that is going to do it for this particular instance. I'll probably do I'll probably do this again if so if something um e if something equally crazy com comes up. Um. But until then. On behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra. I am your gaming monk. Stay fucking frosty, everybody. <laughs>